Well, if you were here with me now, this is the room that the Yemens has actually used as a bedroom uh, when they were living here. But before that, it was probably used as some sort of living room, bedroom from time to time, perhaps. One of the things we really love about this, about this room are the floorboards because they are very, very wide. And uh, a lot of times in colonial America, you couldn't use those wide boards because the larger trees were used for the king. They were called king's pines. And they were actually used for mass in the Royal Navy. And so they would put a broad arrow mark on the trees and say that they couldn't use those because those were already designated for the king. So to have them here is um, exciting. A lot of times, uh, those if you look around homes and the Kinney bunks, you'll find the larger boards are up in the attics where they couldn't be seen so easily if uh, people came by. But a couple of years ago, uh, this room was getting very bouncy. The uh, supports underneath the boards are, are nothing but half logs, and they were getting a little uh, too old to support the weight. And so what we did is we tore up the floor very carefully in order to sort of keep the boards um, just the way they are, and we put in new supports to make it strong. But while the floor was up, we thought it would be interesting to look around and see what was underneath this room. And we were really surprised. Uh, right over, if any of you were here right now and sitting in this chair, right beneath you would be a large stump and uh, a, a tree that was very sizable that um, they clearly cut down before they built the house. And we got a metal detector and we started looking around in the dirt all around that tree. It's very, it was very old and very dry and powdery. And we started to get some hits and we were excited because we found some buttons. And, and so we dug those out and we looked some more and we found pieces of a very old spoon. And we thought that was exciting. So we looked some more. And then we found a couple of coins. And these turned out to be Irish shillings. So they were coins that were minted in Ireland. And uh, one was like from the 1740s and the other one was from the 1730s. So we thought that was really exciting. And so we started looking some more and right on the other side of the table, we dug down just a little bit and underneath the surface you could see ash. And we scraped back the surface dirt more and more and what emerged was this fire pit. So they had a very large fire there at one time. And um, in the fire and around the fire, there were still items that were left. And there were all kinds of these. And these are little wrapped pieces of birch bark. And what they were doing, we believe, is using these for the kindling for the fire to keep it going and get it started. And there were broken pieces of pottery. And what was very interesting is within the fire itself were the bones of what they were eating. And some of it was fish related and remnants of deer. And then um, there was this fellow that we believe was a wild boar, which was uh, really fun to find. So what I love about that is that when all of us are here, we're gathered around talking about the story of the house and the people that lived in the house. But prior to it even being built, there was activity on this property. And there were people sitting by a tree that was right here and um, maybe they took off their coat and some coins dropped out. 
and there was a fire over here and they were sitting around the fire and obviously there were a lot of people. There was a, and um, maybe they were preparing for the building of the house one time and, and getting ready for it. But somewhere within all of this is a wonderful story of what was taking place on the property. And that's the thing I love most about history is that it's a series of stories. And a lot of times we think of them as somebody else's stories when in fact they're all of our story that's intertwined. The people that were here are just like you would be if you were here as well. You were, and someday people will look back and tell the story of how school children used to come to the Emmons house and be told about its history and they would learn here and learn other things about their community. And that's an important part of our history just as the history of how it was created is important. So uh, as we go through the house or as we go around the town, I think that's something that we'd like you all to think about is that you're surrounded by a wonderful history. And if you go down by the river, you'll see where the ships were launched since the ship ways where they were, that activity took place are still there. And you'll see stone walls that fence off what used to be farmland. And you'll see places where the fishing activity used to play, take place and the old fish houses that are some of which still remain and, and so much more. And now you are creating the history that will be talked about in the future. So, so all of that we saw right in here in this room. But um, let's go to the kitchen and see what's taking place there.